So hi everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to see you all joining this meeting. Today we are going to be uh, talking about WIM, uh, We I am, uh, We I improved, so called. Yeah, as a tool to develop and debug C C++ code. Uh, my name is Valentine. Uh, I'm C C++ developer working on Cisco and use Vim very tightly for developing the products. Uh, first of all, why Vim? Uh, the Vim is indeed the perfect tool to develop the applications remotely. Uh, here I mean the uh, remote terminal development, uh, for example, through SSH, yeah. Uh, he's very known for its portability and ease of use. Uh, here, <laughs> let me just be clear, uh, ease of use when you get yourself acquainted with Vim. And uh, fortunately, there are lots of uh, very great tools to get yourself acquainted with very basic functionality, such as Vim Adventures game. Yeah, also Vim is really great for its plugins and uh, it's very huge customizability. For example, you could remap every key binding that you want. Also, Vim has a great community. You could prove it to yourself, for example, by just typing the dot .files in the search prompt in GitHub and you will find in almost each found repository the vimrc file the vim.file that allow you to configure your vim environment. So I, I will show you the example of such file later. Uh, first of all, how I met vim. Uh, well, we are developing our applications uh, remotely. For that, we use the remote build hosts. Uh, and uh, the only way to connect to the host is through SSH. Uh, you could say, why don't you use the X server? Well, uh, that is one of the solutions, but uh, to, be, to be honest, uh, there are lots of uh, lags because the, because the latency to our servers is high. So indeed the best approach is to use the plain SSH and such development tools as Vim. Uh, there are other solutions. Uh, for example, you could use uh, Visual Studio Code plugin and Airmate on the server side. Uh, such solution uh, is less convenient for me. That's why I am not using it. Because you, first of all, you need to remap the ports to use such approach. And each file gets loaded to your computer and that it, that is, I believe, some security, some security impact. Also, there are such space solutions uh, as Mobile XTerm or XShell. They are really convenient, but I'm the old school guy. <laughs> so the best approach for me is to use Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. Uh, really nice and neat solution that has uh, minimal interface and settings that allow you just to, uh, for example, configure the private and public keys to, to not to input your credentials each time when you log in. Also, you could uh, launch uh, party from the PowerShell uh, and so on. So let's start uh, the main in the, the main part of our talk. So first of all, uh, how to read code using Vim. Uh, let me show you one by one. Uh, UTTY load build host. Also, I'm using uh, Tmux terminal multiplexer to manage sessions on the backend side. 
new session report, for example. Uh, main, main window. Okay, let's make directory report. Uh, here I've prepared uh, some sources. Okay, here it is. Uh, tar x that we have sure here it is sort directory so first of all when you enter in Wim you will see the uh, greetings message. Uh, so what to start with? Uh, I'd recommend to start with uh, the WeMRC file. Let me open the my personal WeMRC file. It is located uh, under your home directory, WeMRC. Here you can see a bunch of commands. The commands in the VMRC file are designated with the quotation marks and uh, some settings such as color theme or file types or plugins. Mm, as, a, as a plugin manager, uh, you could use a bunch of those. They are available uh, in the internet. For example, I use Vandal. And using Wandle, uh, you could just uh, type the plugins that you are interested in and just uh, type in your command prompt. Vim command prompt starts with a uh, clan, bottom of the screen, uh, plug install, and it will install all the plugins. They are installed uh, in your home directory as well in the folder named .vim. Yeah, so here are a bunch of other settings. So let us start uh, investigating those one by one. Uh, first, uh, first hint to read code efficiently is to remap. Uh, here I mean to remap your key bindings. Here I done so. Uh, here the map leader. Uh, I use just the space bar, the space button. For example, if I type space and then type some key, it uh, it will be uh, read as a special key. For example, if I type uh, space double Y, it will enter this command in the command prompt, in the Vim command prompt. Uh, so let me split the windows. Here you can see two uh, exactly same files opened in Wim. Uh, one on the top, top hand side, and one at the bottom. Uh, in the normal case, you should type WinCMD H or J or K or L to uh, turn. Uh, to move between the windows uh, after I remapped those to the leader H, leader J, leader K, I could just type space J and here I'm in the bottom window. So could edit this file, space K, here I'm in the top. That's remapping. That is really a nice feature of the WIM. Uh, also you could remap your key uh, key bindings to some uh, some special command. For example, here I have some Cisco bindings. Uh, when I press spacebar G, it will enter in the command prompt syscope find 
G, then control R, control double Y, and uh, here is enter, just return. Okay, and this will copy the word under the cursor here, instead of these two special commands. Yeah, and we'll execute this command instantly. I will show that later. Uh, the next nice feature is the NAR tree. Uh, the NAR tree is uh, a directory tree. Uh, by calling it, you could uh, just open any file you want or open any directory you want and do that with each file you need. Uh, I remapped uh, the NERD tree uh, to the space bar, uh, to the control N. Or oh, here you can see the mappings configuration. Control N is my NERD tree toggle. So if I close the NERD tree, just quit that window and press control N again, it will reopen my NERD tree as it was before. So NERD tree is a plugin. Uh, okay. Uh, the next nice features uh, for uh, C, C++ development is the C scope, C tags. If you are already acquainted with C scope, you may know that uh, C scope can be used separately as a tool. For example, let me quit this again. For example, C scope R. Here I'm in Cscope. I could uh, search anything I want, any uh, C functions or so. Control D. But if uh, you're using Wim, you also could integrate the Cscope into Wim. We I am. Uh, let me just close this window. Okay. Here's the special Cscope com commands. Uh, first of all, when you're opening your Vim, you should uh, attach Cscope. Uh, just load Cscope using this command, Cscope add, Cscope out. If, uh, if, you have, if you already have Cscope add, Cscope, out if you already have this file in the directory. Okay. Looks like uh, we do not have C scope out. Let me remove this file. C scope out. This C scope command generates this file. It is called the C scope database. Okay, let me quit this scope. Quim. C scope. C scope and scope out. Okay, it seems to already load the C scope database. Let me just delete it. Here I uh, wrote a convenient function to load the Cscope. I mapped it uh, to the uh, spacebar R. When I press spacebar R, it calls this function and this function does, does everything you need to load the Cscope to the current directory. Uh, let me remove the Cscope again. Just launch Vim press spacebar R. Here the Cscope is loaded. 
I, I will share this VMRC file to you so you could test uh, these functions and these pipelines if you want to. Oh, okay, C scope reset. Oh, it already loads the C scope out if uh, it is uh, in the directory. Oh, that's why it uh, warns about the duplicate C scope configuration. So, uh, C scope find main. Here uh, we have found uh, some main function definitions in our sources. For example, uh, Lua, Lua.c. Here are the Lua interpreter sources. And having uh, the corresponding mappings, we could serve uh, through these files through uh, Lua functions. I mean, uh, through the C, C code. Uh, for example, if I, if I press spacebar G, I get this function definition, the function that was under the cursor. If I press spacebar C, uh, I get, I'm getting uh, the places in the code where this function is called. That's only because these mappings that copy the word under the cursor and inserts it into these commands. These commands are calling C, C scope under the hood. Okay, that is really nice and convenient way to serve your code. Here that it is. Control O and Control I allows you to go through the places that you were before in the Vim. For example, if I go to this definition and I want to return back to the place I were the last time, I just press Control O and here I am in this function again and could continue my investigation. So, uh, yeah, and it color seems uh, as you monetized uh, my uh, VIM color seam is not the default one. I've installed it uh, externally. Uh, it is called dog run. Uh, here you can see the setting color seam dog run. Mm, I installed it from this site. It contains uh, really nice color seams. Uh, here you can see. There are tons and tons of different settings that you may want in your terminal. Uh, and the last one feature that is really great uh, uh, that you could uh, that you could launch uh, the bash commands right from the Vim, or you could uh, put Vim to the background, do some calculations and return back. Let me show that. Uh, for example, return to our sources. You could uh, use column exclamation mark and type some bash command it will execute this bash command in the bash. And when you press return, you will return back to your whim. Also, you could press control Z. Control Z puts the current running program to the background. Here it is, control D. If I type jobs, jobs. Here I have the stopped VAM program. I could put it back to the foreground, just type FG for FG foreground and uh, type the number of the job I want to put to the foreground. Here I'm back in the whim. Control Z again, two exclamation marks returns, uh, types uh, the last input command in the bash. 
OK. Again, Control Z. Very convenient way to get back to your bash, do some do some additional transformations or so and get back to your file. Uh, next, some tips to write your code. Uh, again, it's remapping. Remapping, it's a very powerful way to do your things. Uh, the other tools are user macro. For example, if you want to transform something for example, uh, let me let me just choose some word. Just press star. Here I can iterate through this word. I can input C I double Y and type long int integer. Okay. Just press N, press dot. This will repeat the last command that I want. Uh, that I have performed. If you record the macro, uh, for example, type Q, N, type, N, type, N, type, and then just type Q again and type uh, the uh, this symbol. Let me just show it. This symbol and uh, the number that you typed after Q, the name of the macro. It will repeat. Uh, it will repeat that macro for you. You could also uh, you could also read uh, about macro in more detail in the Wim Wiki. Also, there are some nice tools such as Omni Completion. To be honest, uh, I'm not using it right now because of a bit uh, older Wim version. Uh, but you also could uh, go to the GitHub and uh, find uh, the latest. Uh, the latest Wim version and to build it, build it by yourself on your uh, in your environment and to use it uh, and to use the latest versions of all the plugins that you might want to debug code. Uh, there is uh, some nice there are some nice tools such as uh, Wimux. That uh, Wimux is uh, a tool that allows you to use Wim such as Tmux, Tmux, such as terminal multiplexer. For example, if I open the other windows in the Tmux, Tmux, here it is. I turn back here and return back to the my to my Wim file. I could launch uh, the programs in the right hand terminal from the Wim while not leaving the Wim. Uh, let me show you, but let let me first change uh, something something in the config file. Uh, Wim config. Okay, here it is. I just want to add uh, one flag to be able to debug that code, just to show you the the greatest, uh, to my mind, uh, Vim functionalities. Its integration with GDB. Okay, let us return back to the Vim environment. Okay, go back. Go back again. For example. Here in my vimrc file, I remapped uh, this vmux command make to the spacebar m. If I press spacebar m, it, this command will uh, 
will be inserted into the Vim command prompt. And you will see that in the the in the in that in the right hand side terminal, uh, the command will be built. Yeah, that is also a very convenient way. Uh, for example, if you are in the in some subdirectory of the project uh, with a separate make file, and you are doing some transformations using Vim, you just could press uh, spacebar M, and it will remake the project instantly. I recompiled the sources, and that is very convenient this way. That's all because the Vmux functionality. Uh, the other very nice tool is the Conquer GDB. Uh, this is a very powerful tool to debug code. Let me show that, but let me first uh, close this, close this right hand side terminal. Well, we already make our program, so we can now try to debug it. Uh, so, con, 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 GDB, bin, law. As far as I remember, uh, in this folder bin, uh, we will have the resulting binaries for the Lua project. Let me just double check that. Here we are in the source directory, cd, cd bin. Oh, okay. Yeah, here it is, uh, our resulting glue executable. So exit this window. Yeah, if we type conquer gdb bin lua, we will open the GDB window. Uh, as a separate Wim window. And the really nice feature if we try to debug our program, we could type start as in the plain GDB. Okay. Uh, as we has not added any breakpoints, it added breakpoint automatically on the main function. Uh, in the upper window, you could see that uh, the code flow automatically moved to the needed file and uh, line. Here we could investigate uh, our code flow, our function. Uh, for example, if we, let's see what functions are called. For example, this Lua open function, go to the the definition using cscope, the remapped space bar G. Uh, for example, go to this function, go to this function, this one, and uh, put, put the breakpoint uh, at the line 85. Break, I'll do C line 85 here it is uh, we can see that the breakpoint is there so we could return back to the uh, main function or back to our breakpoint using control o control i and just continue our execution Okay, here you can see that we uh, catched our breakpoint that we uh, configured right now. Here it is. So we could also see the backtrace. Yeah, we. Uh, it is clear that we go from the main function through Lua open toward this function, row run unprotected. 
are unprotected. Okay, in for frame. And the nice uh, thing that uh, this bottom windows window is still Wim. You could leave the insert mod by pressing the escape key and just go through the lines and uh, study everything you want. You could copy text, uh, you could copy lines. You could, uh, you could for example, use Cscope to find uh, the functions you want. For example, here we have here we have big trace, and we want to study this Lua open function. We could press a spacebar G. Here it is. We are in the Lua open uh, function definition in the corresponding file L state C. We could return back using Control O, and to just press I key to return back to the insert mode and we are still in the GDB, could uh, print the backtrace back. Yeah, that's all is possible through the remapping and plugins. Uh, yeah, also this, let me close this window. Uh, also this uh, Conquer GDB, uh, plugin has its own configurations that you could use. Uh, that means that you are not limited to some specific GDB version or so. If you have uh, your specific GDB that you are using with your project, you could just type here the path to the GDB executable and it will be used. So that's not a limitation. Uh, and I guess uh, that's it. That is all possible through the WIM. Let me return back to the presentation. So thank you all for your attention.